Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to West Valley Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Reverend Clyde Goins. I'm the assistant minister. Hello, everybody online. Uh, Reverend Karen is out today. She is um, taking today off in a couple days. She's doing a silent retreat for herself, which will be really beautiful. And uh, she'll, I promise you she'll be come back, come back rejuvenated and charged. So um, we'll just bless her as she's having that time off and alone. Um, and then I just also want to let you guys know, so yesterday on Saturday, um, Reverend Karen had a meeting with the practitioners, and uh, it's been almost two years since we all got together, and it was, um, and we, we did it by Zoom, but it was just as wonderful, um, everybody getting together and sharing and, and just, just being together consciously. It was just a beautiful experience, and, you know, and it's so funny because, you know, we've talked about this about, you know, uh, it, and going to being in churches and stuff like that it's all about the numbers and how many people can you know we can get into the center and we want the center to grow and everything and then when you get COVID and there's nobody in here and if you get two people in here it's like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the energy changes with the bodies in here you know your love comes into the room and then the, the, the heat turns up i think we have to turn the air conditioner down now so anyway so welcome so we get together every Sunday to remember our truth, that we're whole, perfect, complete, just the way that we are. So, and we have a beautiful guest speaker, today. and we also have Greg, um, Craig and John, um, guest Yay. musicians today, and so they'll be doing their fun music um, this morning as well. So it's time to um, just settle in your seats, get relaxed. And say our vision statement. And say our vision statement. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. So our vision statement, let's read our vision statement together. We are a loving, joy-filled community, honoring the many paths to God as we learn and live the science of mind principles. And so it is. So just simply sit, sit back, relax, get comfortable in your chair at home, allow us to get centered and be ready for uh, uh, Tracy's Tracy. beautiful message. Thank you. <laughs> I will make a quiet place, a quiet place within my heart, and I will wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord.
you sit here in this quiet space, waiting to be revealed and remembered in the face of all that is sacred. We open ourselves to the words that are about to be spoken by the newly minted, almost, Reverend Tracy Herrick, and to open our hearts and our ears and our minds to the music from Craig and from Craig and John, right? Yes. <laughs> and just be prepared for uh, the joy and the bliss and the love that is bound to flow from this day's events. And I just know this to be the best of the best, and so it is. Um, I am reading from the book, I Choose Me by Cynthia James. Every relationship is nothing but a mirror they all tell you how successful you are at being with yourself. It doesn't matter if it's in your biological family dynamics, business environment, or relationships with children or friends. It all comes down to you being willing to take a deep, hard look at yourself. Here's the truth. We all want to be seen, heard, understood, and loved. Where we get confused is that this level of connection is an inside job. If you want to be honored, honor yourself. If you want to be in integrity-filled relationships, be in integrity with yourself. You will never be happy with anyone else on any level if you are not happy with yourself. Here is what I would like you to think about. Are you treating yourself the way you want to be treated? Are you honoring and respecting yourself and asking others to do the same? Are you caring for the temple that is your body? Are you being the love that you desire? What would your life be like if you loved yourself so deeply that the world had no choice but to love you back. You have within you gifts that cannot be measured. You are unique, creative, powerful, talented, and loving. And I say, begin by loving yourself. Open to loving yourself and witness how important you are in this world. And so it is. Good morning. Good morning. As John and I were preparing for today, I was struck by how many times I've been here, and I wanted to let you know that I never take take it for granted. Uh, we feel honored anytime we're invited anywhere to, to play, so thank you for that. Trust that you have in us. Let's set the... Set the table here. Thank you. 
someone sitting next to the chair uh, sitting in the next in the chair next to you and um, it's always good to say hello to the seat and it's, it's, it's so beautiful but uh, I am known as the minister that has jokes so I do have to start <laughs> with a joke. so there's a teacher and she said to her students uh, y'all know how to be very nice and quiet in church right and Joey says well I, I think I know but why is that and then little Johnny offers, so we don't wake up all those sleeping people. <laughs> so hopefully you won't sleep through my uh, talk today, but I hear from my teacher, sleeping's okay because, you know, it's a, it's a transmission of energy and whether you're awake or asleep, your subconscious mind is getting it. So if you need to take a nap, please go to the back. It's okay. <laughs> um, but we are going to talk about today... Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting developing a taco. My dean says the talk will work you, and I'm like, everything works me. So when I'm looking at the books in front of me, uh, Fish left my house yesterday, and I was a little feisty. I'm like, I, I, I just need to get there. And my husband went golfing because I was feisty. He's like, I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> and I set the books out in front of me, and um, I had already had an iteration of the talk but I really wanted to clear it up a little bit more. I really wanted to embody the science of mind principles. And so I put the books out in front of me and I'm like, okay, we're gonna do it. You know, like when you're a little kid, I don't know about you, but when I was a little kid, I would open the Bible and, and open the page and there it was, whatever that said, that's what I was reading. So I just kind of put my hand on the book and I picked up the book and I read through it and I was like, well, that didn't work. Let's try it. <laughs> um, but, but eventually it led me to this beautiful book, Freedom from Stress. And what's funny about this book is that when I was doing a talk in Yuma, Fish borrowed this book and I hadn't thought about this book in almost a year, quite honestly. And I was sitting there and I'm like, I'm missing a book. I'm like pouring through my books. I mean, I have a lot of books. I don't know. And so I called Fish, I go, book and she's like what book and I go I don't know whatever book you borrow that's the book I need <laughs> and she goes, she goes oh that pink book and I go I have no idea what it looks like I was pouring through Amazon and all the books I ordered thrifty books and when fish brought it I was like ah oh, that's the book and so that was funny that spirit knew me well enough to remind me of a book that I had reluctantly let go of fish knows I'm like you want to borrow my but anyway, so Freedom from Stress. Ernest Holmes, this book is fabulous. Um, 
you can find it on you know in a, a number of places but i try to get my books from thrifty books because they're they have great value there but um just a beautiful book and um so hopefully uh we can get through this and um i am still kind of working through my nerves a little bit right now but um but i know you guys love me and everything is good so this morning i was in salt song with my teacher tom and one of the things tom said was I said, I gotta do this talk and I really um, want to make sure that I am sharing truths with people that they can use, that I'm not creating any new ideas or concepts, but that is something that somebody can embody and take home and use practically and put it into their lives. And this is what I love about Science of Mind principles. And something came over me that uh, it was so beautiful. And somebody asked a question that said, so much fear arises in me when I think about waking up. And he said, often uh, when, we're, when we traverse the different dimensions of life from beginning to where we are now, fear arises. There is a certain fear and as they, the fears get more subtle and subtle and subtle, they, they, to the mind, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And some of these fears um, that come up, of course, are always false. They're always discordant thoughts, as Ernest Holmes would say. But we do have to push through them. I don't, I don't know push. We do have to move through them. But he said, don't worry. Take heed. Hear this. That God is with you every step of the way. Guru, God, and self your higher self, your true self, that all of this must be, must be purged to recognize the realization of the oneness that we all are. And that that stress, we all go through it. We all do. And some of it is so deep before you were maybe even able to talk, um, even being birthed into this world. So I had this uh, inspiration that popped up that said, oh, because um, if you know me, you know I am, I don't like, I'm afraid of the dark. But there's my disclosure to everybody, I'm afraid of the dark. I, I've moved past it a little bit, but Bill went away recently and I sat in my house like this. <laughs> I, I forgot that I was going through ministerial school, that I was a teacher, and it caused me so much stress. And I had to take out my books and I had to remember who I was in the time of stress and discordance. I had to find a mantra, Tracy, that you were making progress. I had to move through that dark night of the soul to see the sun, because the sun is always there. And so in this, I was like, oh, my whole life has been for this moment. Your whole life has been for these moments. And when we get stressed, it's just discordant energy that needs to be released from your body. It needs to just be welcomed home to the table of love. And Ernest Holmes talks about releasing discordant thoughts. He doesn't say to push them away. He doesn't say to stomp on them. He doesn't say to turn your back on them. He just says that they're discordant thoughts. And so my addition to that is that that discordant thought just needs to be brought back to the table of love. So in my mind this morning, I recognize there's this beautiful table and I, my higher self is sitting at the table and says, hey, you're not enough, welcome. Hey, you, whatever name you wanna call yourself, welcome. Hey, you know, and there's a lot of iterations of Tracy that got me to, to this day and I'm sure there's a lot of iterations of you as well. And some of them we think back and we are not too kind to ourselves about those memories. Can you relate to that? Mm -hmm. A time where you thought, oh, I shouldn't have done that, or I shouldn't have said that, or why was I so mean to that person? And, and you know, but the truth is, is there's one consciousness and multiple people. So the mind sees two, the mind sees duality, but Ernest Holmes assures us that there is only one, one, one consciousness, multiplicity of people so in this book he says in part one new horizons of thinking <laughs> he says to adequately meet or solve any problem which may confront you there is the necessity to discover what it is you have to work with know thyself i'm sure we're all familiar with the concept of knowing myself your immediate reaction is to search for external things 
funny, this is what Tom was talking about in my meeting this morning or my satsang that I go to. He's like, we do, we go out into the world like the prodigal son, we try things, the mind, it wants this, it wants this, it wants this, and then one day it realizes the impermanence of all of those things and we go back to this discordant thought of I'm still not happy. I, 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 I was uh, telling my teacher, I, I meet with him on Wednesdays, uh, he's been helping me dig up some of those old deep-seated emotions and I said, I just want to be, again, the minister that, that just speaks from the heart. And he said, well, then speak from the heart. <laughs> and I, I was telling him that I have this, I love from malas. If you come into my house, I have them hung everywhere. And I said, oh, I, I really, really love malas. And, um, and this funny story about having to buy them and how the money appeared. And, and it was just, a, it's a great story, which maybe I'll get into. But he goes, do you use them? And I go, well, they're hanging on the wall. <laughs> He's like, do you, I go wear them for jewelry. And he goes, okay. And I said, um, but the story's about how I attracted the money to pay for them. And he goes, yeah, write that down. Write this question down. Well, what's the question? Write it down, write it down. Okay, he always has me writing questions down. And he's like, why do I love malas? What do malas do for me? How do they make me happy? And so I recognize that everything is a question. When you run up to a discordant thought that causes you stress, there is always a question that will arise. And if you can't get to the question, speak to somebody wise, a minister, a practitioner, a friend, and allow them to ask you the question and notice your resistance to it, right? Why didn't, I just came to talk to you about my malas. I don't really need you to ask me a question. Well, you know, if you want to get to the truth, you want to bring up all that stress, you want to bring up that, that, that discordant thought. And I'm speaking so joyfully about discordant thoughts today. <laughs> um, but, you know, they can be deeply painful. They can create a scenario where uh, it, it does swing you into depression. It can be the hardest thing that you ever move through. But the reality is there is light to guide your way. That is what I love about science of mind. It is such a beautiful teaching, but it is a tool. It is a tool for your mind to use, to have the recognition that there is a truth about you and everyone else, and it cannot be denied. You must say yes to life to move through the stress. And if you don't, the stress will stay, and that's okay. Because eventually one day you'll, you'll get sick of it. So as I was writing on my paper this morning, I thought to myself, oh, my whole life, my whole life, my beloved has been there. And my only absence of recognition is my unwillingness to say yes. That that felt better than the ultimate joy that I caught glimpses of, but I did not know. And I know that for you, and so did Ernest Holmes. Ernest Holmes went on to say, when you are overwhelmed by excessive stress, what do you mean when you refer to yourself? Just what is the individual that reacts? and has these feelings, that thinks. It thus becomes necessary that you try to determine who and what you are before you can find the nature and the quality and the power of the tools you have to work with. You must inquire, you must question. There is that within you which properly recognized and applied may enable you to open up to new horizons of thought it is only as you learn about yourself that you may learn to create a life more of your liking. So this is, this is discordant thoughts. It's like saying, hey, this isn't it. But the problem is, is our mind, it cultivates a, itself around this discordant thought. It has this dualistic nature that believes this discordant thought isn't real. And it causes those feelings in the body and the body feelings can be so overwhelming. I know I'm right there with you when I'm in my house like this, uh, you know, and I'm like, and I'm trying to bribe everybody I know to come spend the night in my beautiful beach room uh, just so I can get a good night's sleep. I, I, it, it is terrifying for me. I talk about it like it's silly, but it is a terrifying feeling from a deep wound of youth. And at the same time, it's pushing me into the light. 
pain really does push and vision really does pull. I can attest to that because I am standing here today talking to you from a little girl who was afraid of everything, couldn't find her way, never thought she was enough, extremely bullied, made fun of, just the quirkiest kid, you know? And so I went about trying to establish myself of value by validation and what people think and how my boss perceived me and how ministers perceived me and school has really helped me with that <laughs> i'm just saying um and and then and then recognizing that oh everyone's going through that everyone you meet is going through that because they have a personality they have a mind body and Ernest Holmes really, really wanted us to know. And so I'm just gonna share this quote with you, the most beautiful quote, because it reminds us in the times that we cannot, when our mind gets so caught in the, I like to call lie, you could call it whatever you want, but the illusion or the lie or the duality of life. Ernest Holmes says, whatever the nature of the universe may be, I love that, whatever, we don't know, we think we know. Um, we are all partakers of that nature. We must be. How can God have created this world, whatever God may be to you, the universe, right? How could that have been so and it not be you? But we are all partakers of that nature. Stars, children of the stars. Our bodies are made of the cosmic particles. Our minds luminous with the cosmic light. Our lives passing moments in the cosmic procession partakers of its substance, its luminosity and the endless flow of its movement in time. The heat of our bod bodies is borrowed from the sun. The energy that carries the stars in its courses is the energy that pulses and the beating of our hearts. And the light of the furthest star of nature with the light which shines for everybody, all of humanity and all of kingdom, all kingdoms. I mean, that is so rich and beautiful with what I would call truth. Now I'm saying truth because it's better than what I believed yesterday. So it's a higher truth or idea for me today, right? But the inquiry, the questioning is where it's at. How do I know that's true? Don't, don't believe me, don't believe anybody. Go experience life for yourself, get involved get busy get going ernest holmes didn't say sit in a chair and just listen to youtube videos all day although i have done that <laughs> i had a muji phase a sad guru phase i've had lots of phases lots of lots of phases but you know what i realize is they're all talking about the same thing yeah. so explore experience but ultimately i came back home to ernest holmes i came back home to it's all beautiful it's all god and it's all light and even if you get caught up in the ones that confuse you if you ask your higher self ernest holmes read read a book uh this thing about you he says if you inquire into the goodness of your heart into the truth of who you are your higher self will always give you what you're looking for and you must train your mind to see it you must cultivate it through a teaching an activity you must make a commitment uh, we, we had our meeting yesterday with the practitioners as Clyde was saying and by the end I was like commitment compassion and consistency those are everything that you okay, I needed and need but we all have to develop the will to follow one particular thing and honestly in the beginning i was kind of all over the place and then i hid from everybody because i was ashamed of my habit to be late or you know to think that i knew something so just to do this and to shortcut it and not to totally involve myself and steepen and deepen in the talks and my teacher Rebe, who has passed on now He's the one who encouraged me to be here today along with my higher self because he's a version of that right <laughs> that we're all reflecting back that one consciousness um i recognize he would say while you're studying with me put your ageless wisdom hat on and steepen yourself in that 
When you're doing science of mind, put that hat on and steepen yourself in it. Become an expert at it. People need it. It brought you here to me today, and then you will lead people to wherever they need to be. But it is your journey. As a minister, I can only stand up here and tell you the beauty that I see in these words, the direction that I took with my life. But even a seed has built in it a contrast, right? A seed knows when you plant it, it is going to be whatever plant that it has been in its DNA, an oak tree, a rose, a flower. But we have contrast, apparent duality of life. But the nature of your mind is two. The nature of love is one. And so you can always find direction, but the direction needs to be seated within you. If you continually look outward, and there will be a period of time that you do that, because that is the natural cultivation of the mind towards oneness and wholeness and realization, is to recognize that we're all moving through different iterations and letting go and letting go and letting go, and stress and freedom from it is a natural iteration of the mind. And if you cultivate that, uh, indwelling spirit, if you allow it to embody you, to, you get to surrender. This morning I was like, oh, I get it, I surrender. And then Tom said to this guy he was talking to, he's like, oh, your head's in the mouth of the tiger now. And then he kind of <laughs> laughed, right? And he's like, well, that doesn't sound very positive, but it's true. Um, that you get to this point where you are willingly putting your head into the mouth of the tiger and you want to be consumed by your beloved and all the iterations of you become come home and they all are embodied and then wisdom flows through you unhindered by the stress and the lie and the illusion. But you are still here. You are still an active participant in life. You still go to work. You still come to church. You still go to class. But there is a freedom from being released from the bondage of your own mind and ideas where you open up to the goodness and freshness of life and you develop faith. If you want to know the first thing about moving towards your wholeness, it's you must develop faith. How can you trust in something you haven't proven? You cannot. And mine came at the most interesting time in a conversation with Reverend Karen and there was a sense of surrender in this conversation we were having and I walked out of the office going wait something just happened there. <laughs> my, my beloved showed up for both of us that there was a quiet moment where we both looked at each other and said oh and I said Wow, and I, I can, that's the best way I can describe it to you. Like, even when I think about it today, it goes in my little book of miracles. My teacher shared with me that the way that you cultivate this inner space, and I have read it by Ernest Holmes as well, is write things down. I got up yesterday, and I was so excited, and I was talking to Bill, and I'm like, I got my talk. It's great. It's you, you are always the perfect you, and I am telling him my talk, and by the time Fish got to my house, I forgot everything. <laughs> it was all gone. And I was like, and I'm trying to tell her, and I'm like, okay, so it's not the talk. But it was beautiful in the moment. I think it was the talk for Bill. <laughs> but it was fun. And this is, the, this is the thing is I get all worked up when I'm doing these talks, you know, and I get kind of cranky. And I'm like, oh, this is the birthing process. This was my life, right? You're, you're birthed. You, you're kind of helpless. You're relying on people. Things happen. You, you start to get about five or six, you cultivate the sense of independence, you're moving through. Can you see how your life is a representation of the waking up process? This is what I love about it. Ernest Holmes, he, he talks about this, and, and I like, like to say that the only problem, and I hate to say it's even a problem, is that you must know thyself. You must prove to yourself and start believing in something other than the inner critic. Um, one other thing that I really wanted to read from this book is your inner resources. Um, Ernest Holmes says that we spring up out of the universe, countless individuals, innumerable people, all having the same source, yet all different. If we looked exactly alike and act exactly alike, the monotony could, uh, could be so infinite. <coughs> Everything tends to prove that the universe is pouring itself 
into a normal, um, innumerable individual forms. We are all rooted in one substance. We know the eternal in eternality of energy, the eternality of stuff, which is manifested from form. But God, spirit, life is beyond the form. It is who you truly are. And I was thinking about Jesus. I, 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 you know, I'm a Catholic girl at heart, and I've come to terms with my beautiful upbringing and how it's cultivated me to who I am today. But I, I recognize that for me, this little book of miracles that my teacher um, had me, to, he wanted me to write down evidence of things unseen. This is what Ernest Holmes says faith, faith is. And so I woke up and I was like, oh, I, I manifested money to pay for my malas. And then that was a miracle to me. Um, but the next day I woke up and I was like, oh, I woke up. That was the beautiful miracle. I woke up. I mean, mala is nothing if you don't wake up. <laughs> your, family might get, your family might get to enjoy it, right? Um, but, you know, we move through these steps. Know thyself. Cultivate faith. And then the ultimate thing is surrender. And you step, and, and when you get to surrender, you give up step one and two. They're gone. And then you move into three, and you do it with the certainty in which you developed it, right? You move into faith with the certainty that got you to step three, surrender. And I was going back to Jesus, and I really wanted and thought about his life. He knew this his whole life is the embodiment of the process of realization. I mean, I believe this to be true right now, and I don't really know if it's like truth, like is that really true? But I feel it in my heart and that idea has come to me that the cruci crucifixion is really the release of all the iterations of you. You die to yourself every day, every time you say yes and you step into something new, you are crucifying to that old idea to get to the realization of self for wisdom to flow unencumberedly through you so that you can experience the joy and freedom that life is without any idea about it. Nice. This is what Ernest Holmes has said, that if we take the time to study the teaching, you discipline yourself through commitment, consistency, and compassion, because with commitment and consistency, you need compassion because a lot of stuff's going to come up. And you've got to develop that faith and you have to develop that trust in a partner and you have to develop a relationship that will carry you through so that you don't give up don't give up and most importantly don't worry it's not that serious because you already are that but you somehow have to prove it to this mind in its curious nature that just wants to know everything. And I'm very logical. So I was listening to Tom today, and I'll close with this. I was, I was listening to him. I was reading Ernest Holmes, and I'm listening to him, and I'm kind of put, tying them together. I realized that it's important for me to logically understand things. When I logically understand things, it helps me move to the next iteration. Some people need to feel things. Some people, they don't care. They just go, yeah, me, sign me up. And you know, there was a time in that, that I was in that phase too. Like, yeah, that sounds good. Anything's better than what I got. So I just want to close today just knowing that there is a freedom that you already are. Ernest Holmes talks about it so much, and he, and he got to the end of his life where he, I know he had this moment of unity consciousness where he just was like, it is what it is, and it's beautiful. And you already have that, but that dualistic part of us needs to be reminded, and that's what's beautiful about the path of life is yes, it can be painful, and yes, it can hurt, and yes, we can get stuck. But reach out, talk, come to a class, see a practitioner, let go of the fear and embrace the faith. Move from insecurity to security. Move from, you just move from this um, 
uh, doubt. Doubt is good, but if it's a doubt, like it keeps you trapped in your castle, then something else needs to birth through you and become cultivated so that you can recognize the higher aspirations of your true self and let it embody your personality so you can do whatever you're doing well and with truth and honesty and, and 100%. You know, when I'm at work being a insurance person, I want to be there wholeheartedly present, giving everyone I meet all of me. And I often fall like, is this the job I'm supposed to be doing? Why am I on the phone? How come am I taking another call? And I have to remember myself, <laughs> it's life. And we need people that are awake in all aspects. All aspects. So you are beautiful, you are special, you are whole and you are complete. And this work helps you with the realization of that. It was Ernest Holmes' life's work. And I really bound to make it mine as well. So I appreciate you allowing me to share my truth with you today. And we'll close these ideas with beautiful prayer. Oh, so right here, right now in the space of this building and that it and these streets as this energy magnet, magnet magnifies itself out. That every person that you meet feels your heart, that it has grown three times its size with the, as you embody the truth and allow it to flow through you, your beingness. That you release the stress, you release the false idea, you dissolve the discordant thought by welcoming everything back to the table. You bring it to your heart and let it do the work you are not the doer. God, your higher self, your truth, the creator and cultivator of the universe is the doer. You do nothing except give yourself to it. And in this moment, everything heals from that space. If you have health, finances, anything that is creating that discordant thought, don't worry. Be faithful to the idea that there is a cultivation of inner peace that knows and is the answer and the question. It is beautiful. It is now. It is you. And so it is. So it is. It's funny how the next song is kind of about that. <laughs> so this song is... Uh, it's a blues song I'm going to play for you. Although we don't get blues in Signs of Mind. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's about the, 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 the words that always came to me, you know. We let go, we let God. Well, the song says uh, we give it up and turn it over. Because that's where I stand. So I believe in that. I believe that we let go and let God. And it happens. <laughs> Give it up, turn it over. I give it up.
it's a twist and it's a turn They're guaranteed Sometimes the drive Seems so long Even pushing the needle At full speed So I gaze up So we have the drop box in the back there. We also have one in the bookstore. So you call, uh, put your uh, money in the card or check in the card and just drop it in the box and we'll take care of it from there. So, and we, we appreciate all givings and, and consciousness of love. So, so let's say our giving affirmation together. I live in a consciousness of good. Divine love blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, and so it is. So it is. You guys are going to sing our closing yeah. song? You betcha. Well, that sounds so southern. You betcha. <laughs> you betcha. All right. I know you know this song. I know you do. Because I've played it a bunch of times here, and I make you sing. So, you ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm not even going to bother rehearsing it. You're that good. <laughs> Thank you. 